Dear friends, 60 years ago, representatives of 32 African nations established the Organization of African Unity, predecessor of the African Union. In doing so, they expressed themselves in favor of promoting the unity and solidarity of the African states, defending their sovereignty and eradicating all forms of colonialism. This event marked an important milestone achieved towards an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa. Many African political leaders stressed the importance of African unity. They shared the opinion that Africa will only play an independent role in international affairs if it is united. Close intra-African collaboration was also viewed as an essential precondition for the elimination of legacies of colonialism and enhancement of states' national sovereignty. Eventually, most African nations gained independence in the 50s through the 60s and later in the 90s with the downfall of apartheid. It may seem these processes were non-violent, yet in almost all cases successful negotiations were preceded by military struggle in which African people spared neither efforts nor blood. Thousands of names of those who fought for the liberation of Southern Africa, for instance, are engraved in the walls of the memorial complex of Freedom Park in Pretoria. Support for anti-colonial movements in Africa since the mid-20th century became one of the crucial parts of the USSR's foreign policy. The Soviet Union helped African friends create security systems, train their military, provided arms and ammunition. With Soviet assistance, dozens of energy facilities, mining enterprises, machine building and metal processing plants across the continent were constructed. Soviet diplomacy defended the interests of African nations in multilateral fora, first of all in the United Nations and its Security Council. It was upon the initiative of the USSR that the Declaration on Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1960, which accelerated the collapse of global colonial system established by the collective West. It was done despite fierce resistance of colonial powers, which insisted that the colonies were not yet ready for independence. Although colonialism has been left on the ash heap of history, significant disparities between the global north and the global south in access to resources, technologies and opportunities for human capital development persist today. Former colonial powers use all available economic, financial, political and military tools to preserve their influence. They continue doing what they are really good at fueling conflicts across the globe, pitching people against each other to dictate their will to the rest of the world, divide and conquer. Yet, the movement towards a fairer world order is a fact, a geopolitical reality. Today, the black continent increasingly asserts itself as a new global center of power based on independence, cultural and civilizational identity. United Africa claims its legitimate right to establish itself as one of the pillars of the upcoming multipolar world, which Russia fully supports. We assume that relations between Russia and Africa, whether political, humanitarian or trade and investment, are of an intrinsic value and do not depend on fluctuations in the international environment. It is good to see that our African friends have a similar understanding. Together, we will be even stronger. Pila i Africa ekinile, e bambene futi e pumile laio, usuku oluxle, wasi Africa.